Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, my co-founder of Celebrating Act 2, Art Kirsch, and I are with the fabulous Brain Whisperer and I Picker, <laughs> Stephen Campbell. Steve. Hello. How are you? Good to see you again. Good to see you. Always good to be here. Yeah, it's really great. Uh, you, you know, um, you always are able to help us frame uh, and our audience frame uh, various issues that sometimes we don't even think about, but that are important to us and we, we're we constantly working on. But the one thing that I don't think we've ever really uh, discussed in any detail is how, uh, with all the scary stuff that we hear on TV uh, and so on and so forth, how do, how do we navigate the pandemic? Yeah. Uh, do you have some hints for us on how to maybe best uh, uh, work within the pandemic with a good frame of mind? Let me start with a, a wake up call. Um, the, the Tokyo Olympics just finished. Here's a thought about them. Most of the athletes lost. Only a few won. And we're talking about men and women who have been working on practicing for these games, in some cases for years. And they go to the games and they've lost. I'm thinking of Katie Courtney, who competed in the bicycle. And she had been practicing for years. She was already an award-winning bicyclist and she lost. And she wrote an amazing article for the Washington Post on what you do when you lose. And that's what I want to talk about today, because quite frankly, we will eventually win with the pandemic, but right now we're losing because it has returned with the Delta variant. People are dying all over the world and America. We're having a great deal of controversy of vaccination versus non-vaccination, which is splitting America up. What do you do with that? What do you do when you think that you're winning and then you're losing? How can you navigate your feelings? We want to talk about feelings a lot. So that's what I want to talk about today, how we can navigate with that. Let me begin with a principle that is so foundational to cognitive psychology. Cognitive psychology is simply a study of how we think, how we feel, and the foundation for cognitive is that our brain believes everything we tell it. So we are the boss. We're the ones that determine how we think. Our brain believes it without question. So when you say this pandemic is really hard, I can't believe it's back again, our brain says, okay, yeah, you're right. It really is. And then it looks for ways in which it is hard. That's the scary part. The wonderful part is when you realize the negative messages that you were giving yourself and you decide, it's a decision, you decide to say, well, these negative messages aren't helping me any. They're causing depression. They're causing me to feel bad about myself and the whole thing. So I'm going to replace these negative messages with positive ones. And when you do, your brain says, oh, okay, yeah, you're right, because your brain believes everything you tell it. So that's the foundation of what I'll be talking about today. So let's talk about, first of all, of where we are in terms of how we became the way we became. There have been so many theories in psychology over the last 100 years, one theory was that we came from our environment, we came from our birth order, we came from how we were raised. Another theory is that we come from our genes. Another theory is that we come from behaviorism, cause and effect. Um, and what I want to suggest to you is that all of those are true. How can they all be true? Because when you convince yourself that you came from how you were raised, your brain looks for ways to make that true. When you convince yourselves that you came from cause and effect, your brain 
believe that also. So the story that I love to tell is that I was convinced I was really stupid in math for more than half my life. And I was, because that's what I said. I'd see numbers, I'd freak out. Then I found myself teaching math. And I discovered this is really fun. I can do this, I can do this. And it turns out that not only was I having fun, I got really good at it to the point where I wrote a couple of college textbooks. So I want to share with your audience that even though the pandemic is returning, and even though tragedies are happening all over the world, we and you are still in control of what you're thinking. And not only that, because it doesn't stop there, it start, starts also with how you're feeling. Now, prior to the 1960s, psychology said your feelings come first. And so when I watched the towers fall at 9-11, it didn't matter what I was thinking. I felt the horror of what the world was feeling. I felt the frustration. I felt the anger. I felt the confusion. It didn't matter what I was thinking. And that's absolutely true. But... Over time, really important, over time, a week, a month, my feelings gradually evolved and changed. Why? Because my beliefs began to change and evolve. And it turns out, and this came in a little book called The Guide to Rational Living back in 1981, written by Dr. Albert Ellis and Robert Sherman, that our feelings primarily come not from the pandemic. So where are they coming from, Steve? They're coming from what we are saying about the pandemic. They're coming from our self-talk. Because people say, well, I'm not really sure what I believe. And there's a wonderful handle that you have on that. And that is your self-talk. If you want to know what you're believing, listen to what you're saying to yourself about everything. If you want to know what you're believing about yourself, listen to what you're saying to yourself about yourself. If you want to know what you believe about the pandemic, listen to what you are saying about the pandemic. So there's the two points. Our brain believes what we tell it. And our feelings primarily come from what we are saying to ourselves about ourselves. Now, let's apply that in terms of navigating the pandemic. And I want to give your people four tips. So if you want to write these down, this is where you want to write them down. Number one, self-control is critical. Realize this, that you are far more in control of what you're thinking that you, than you thought you were. Your brain is a captive audience. It's stuck up here, and you are the only one it listens to. Let me say that again. You are the only one your brain listens to. And people say to me, well, Steve, what about what others say to me? What, what about what others say to me? Listen, what others say to you do not become a part of you until you agree with them hear me say that again what others say do not become a part of the way you're thinking and what you feel about yourself until you agree with them so number one you're in control of what you're thinking number two you need to have a positive mindset is a positive mindset magical no of course it isn't i don't believe in magic i believe in science but you can choose to think positively. Is it easy? Of course not, especially if you've been a pessimist all your life. But you can be aware of what you're thinking. If you want to know what you're thinking, listen to what you're saying. Listen to your self-talk. Your self-talk is such a wonderful instrument to determine what's going on down here. And when you start saying negative stuff, you can stop yourself and can say, wait a minute. I used to be that way, but no more. I'm just not going to allow that to happen. 
And what does your brain do? How does it respond? It says, okay, you're the boss. I believe what you tell me. Number three, there are all sorts of coping strategies that can work for you. Some of them can be emotional. Some of them can be practical. Some of them can be changing the way you think. The nice thing about um, the internet is that we now have access to trillions of articles about all of this. Psychology Today is a wonderful, wonderful resource of this. Go to Google, type in Psychology Today, and just type in a subject that you want to read about. And you have dozens and dozens of articles written by competent, experienced psychologists to talk just about what you want to talk about. And finally, a fourth way to navigate the internet is go back to social distancing. I hate to be saying this again, but I'll tell you right now, social distancing is really going to be important. You need to social distance. Even if you've been vaccinated, you can still have the viruses up under your nose and spread them out. So navigating and masks. Now, where did all this begin? How do I know this works? Let me tell you a story and then we'll close. When I was 19 years old, I was studying to be a doctor at San Diego State University. And a young man in an attempt to kill himself ran into my VW Volkswagen with his old 88. The boy that I was driving home was killed instantly and I was crushed everywhere, legs, face, the whole thing. The wonderful thing about my brain is that I don't remember a thing. I was unconscious for two weeks, so I don't remember a thing. Finally, after being in traction for three months, they put me into a spike of body cast. And as I lay on the bed, when they put it on me, looking at the ceiling, because that's all you can do in a spike of body cast, because it goes down to your toes, up to your chest, I said things to myself that were absolutely lies, such as, I cannot do this anymore because they told me I might be in this cast for another four months. And I said, I'm helpless. I can't bring Dwayne back. I can't like make my legs heal faster. But the lie that I was telling myself was, I am helpless. I can't do a thing, which is untrue. What could I do? Ready? Here we go. I can think differently. More specifically, I can tell myself different things. I can replace the messages I have been giving myself. So as I lay there in the bed, I'm a Christian, I know the Lord loves me, and I said to myself, okay, I'm going to believe that something wonderful is going to come out of this. When? I have no idea. What will it be? How can I know that? Are you sure? No, I'm not sure. But I'm also sure that the Lord loves me. And as soon as I said that, I fell asleep. Make a very, very long story short, within two years, I was back to school, finished up my degree. My grades, my grades went down the tubes because I had had a concussion, so I had forgotten a lot about what I had learned. But I found myself, two years after that, traveling around America, singing professionally. And it was on that tour that I met my wife. It is one year in a hospital worth 50 years with Mary? I'm surprised you would have to ask. So the point I want to make for your people is this. You are far more in control of your mind than can ever you could possibly imagine. I just finished an article from my webpage called More Than the Stars. It turns out that there are more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on the earth. That's not just an opinion, that's what science has discovered. 
take that one step further. There are more self images and patterns in the human brain than there are stars. And that's not me saying that. That's Dr. B.S. Ramachandra Nadagusi San Diego in a book called Phantoms in the Brain. So the only thing that holds us back from learning and growing and changing is not the physiology of our brain. It's not the pandemic. It's not being isolated. It is what we are saying to ourselves about ourselves. And you can replace that whenever you want. Wow. Great perspective. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Wow was right. You know what? The first thing I thought of when you were relating your story, and uh, I'm going to tell you that. Uh, I'm very fortunate. I do the editing of this, and I'm probably going to watch it about three or four times to make sure <laughs> that I have the message right. But the first thing I thought of, okay, when you were talking about being in control of how you think is Stephen Hawking's. Okay, yes. you talk about somebody who was brilliant but had zero control over anything he could do other than his yeah. mindset. And look at yeah. what all he accomplished after he was yeah. fully incapable of doing anything for yeah. himself. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he had such a sense of humor. He was funny. Yeah. I remember the, uh, actually it was in the movie, uh, but I understand it was true, is that uh, after they gave him this artificial voice, they wondered why he wondered why they wasn't British. <laughs> <laughs> He so was that was his big, big complaint. <laughs> he was in the Big Bang Theory a, a number of number of sessions, and and uh, it was really funny. There was one line where he said, the, 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 "I can't remember the name of the, the the main character in the Big Bang Theory, but he is a a real nerdy guy." And and there's a place where it shows Steve Hawkins on the monitor saying to himself, "This guy is such a wiener. <laughs> He's just funny." And yet, you're right. He said that's a perfect example of what you can do. No, you're only incapable when you say you are. That's your decision. But the sad thing is, a lot of people believe that. Yeah, I did for half my life. Yeah. Yeah, when it, you know when it comes to the pandemic, um, there's so much legitimate bad news out there that it's easy to focus on that. Yeah. And that creates fear. Yeah. Oh my God, I can't go out. Oh, yeah. what am I going to do? Yeah. yeah. And fear, of course, paralyzes us. So we don't yeah. do anything. Yeah. Yeah. So you're and right. Yet, you know, it, it works out. Mary and I on Sunday were invited to a get together. Uh, and we went over there and he's in a small room and there were about 20 people in that room. And we walked in, looked at each other, and after about five minutes, we just politely said, got to go, and left. Mary had gotten really dressed up, and my, my wife is just beautiful. And I got dressed up, too. So instead of that, we went to the Montgomery Village, and we had the most wonderful lunch together. And we hadn't done that for months. And I can't tell you how much that connected that connected together with that. So things work out. Things work out. Yeah. 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 We do have to be cautious. Yes. It's a real thing, but we don't have to succumb. That's right. To negative thinking and fear. That's right. That's yeah. right. It's our decision. We decide. Good. And it all begins up here with what That's we right. tell ourselves. It begins up there. Yeah. Well, Steve, always you. great perspective. That, this is probably. Uh, you know, you go from one favorite to the next favorite. Just every time that you relate to us ways that we can better control our own feelings, that it's really up to us. Yeah. And that, so that's sort of been the mantra, the message the that mantra. you've been delivering to us. So, yeah. Yeah. but this was really uh, wonderful. Thank you. And we You're welcome. look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate that.
For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.